M75 from Harley Benton. Is it worth the money? Is it worth even investing in modding this guitar? Those are two things I've done. I've bought the guitar and I've modded it. I'm gonna show you what the guitar was like before the mods. I am also gonna share with you some of the things I had to do to this particular guitar to get it up to a playable standard. And there's also a few pros and cons I'm gonna be sharing throughout the video. And we're gonna to listen to before the mods and after the mods. And then I'm gonna give you my opinion on whether this was all worth it or not. We're gonna start at the beginning. Why did I buy this particular guitar? I wanted to buy a Brian May Red Special, like the official guitar for the series that I'm working on, but I ended up busting my budget when I bought a Kemper Profiler, and I bought a few other things, and now I'm stretching it kind of thin. So I thought maybe the next logical step would be to do what a lot of people would do in this circumstance, which is to buy the next closest thing and mod it up to about the standard of what you would find on the Red Special. Of course, this guitar, as is right now, is nothing like the Red Special, but it gets closer to it than all the other guitars that I own. I'm gonna start with the things that I like about the guitar, then I'm gonna be talking about the cons, and then I'm gonna be telling you some of the things within the pros and cons that I've had to do to make this guitar more up to my standard in terms of making it a keeper. So the first thing that I really like about the guitar is obviously the look. It really does look like a Brian May guitar. It's got the triangular headstock. It has the switches on there that look the part. The pick guard looks the part, the body shape. So overall, like at a quick glance, a lot of people will mistake this for a Red Special, but there are some major differences between both models. It has pretty much exactly the same body shape, except it is much smaller than the Red Special. The pickups on there, they look like Trisonic pickups. You're also gonna notice that the bridge is very different from the one on the Brian May Red Special. This one here is more of your typical Fender style bridge. The volume and tone knob are not the aluminum ones. They still work and they do what they're supposed to, but if you wanna go with authentic, you're probably gonna wanna change those knobs on the guitar. And one of the most crucial ingredient to this whole thing is the pickup wiring. The one on this one here is not in series, like on the Red Special, it's actually in parallel. And you only get some of the sounds from the Red Special because you have a five-way toggle switch and the out of phase positions are not gonna sound exactly the same because the pickups are not wired in series. So it does make a difference on how those out of phase sounds will sound with distortion and with clean tones. So here are the things that I had to change on this guitar when I got it. So this is gonna be both some of the mods and the cons for this particular guitar. So my guitar wasn't a B stock, I just bought a regular BM75. The neck was severely bowed when I got it. And by severely, I don't mean like I couldn't fix it. I just mean that it had a substantial bow. I mean, I could have shot arrows with this thing. I did tweak it a bit, but even then I didn't bring it down enough. I had, I believe they were nines on the guitar and it was two and a half step down when I got it. And as soon as I tuned it up to uh, concert pitch, the guitar was just basically unplayable. The action was too high. The nut was a bit too high for my personal taste. So I had that changed to a proper nut. The action was a bit too high due to that bow in the neck, but also I believe the saddles were just a bit too high. So all in all, the guitar was, I would say, unplayable when I first got it, but that's to be expected with a guitar in this range. So if you're looking at a guitar like this, do expect to put a bit more money aside so you can bring it to a tech and get it properly serviced so that it is playable. The mod I did myself was to change the tuning keys on there. I saw a video with um, Elmo, that guy, I forget his family name, but Elmo, you guys probably know who I'm talking about. He did a great review on this guitar. His had Grover tuners on there. As with mine, when I got it, it had some Harley Benton branded tuners. They weren't really the best. So the nut wasn't that great. The tuners weren't that great. So I had a set of Grover tuners that were lying around. So I installed them myself. It created a much more stable guitar in terms of tuning with that. But then after that, all the other mods I wanted to do, I couldn't do it myself. I don't have the skill. So I brought it over to a musician that I got to know here named Phil. He's also able to do all these mods and set up guitars. He used to do that professionally. So I contacted him and I told him about my plans to set up the guitar properly, but also go into that Brian May territory. 
So he looked up the specs and he said, yeah, I can mod it so you can have all the tones and we're going to make it in series instead of parallel. So that is what we did. So now before I show you the pictures that Phil took of all the mods that he did, we're gonna take a look under the hood. Now, before we go ahead deep into the whole mods with the switching system, I wanna talk about the fretboard. So when I took off the strings, I took out the lemon oil and I was ready to polish the frets and you know clean up the fretboard. I did notice that the fretboard looked like it had some kind of black gunk on it. I'm not sure if it was some kind of dye that they put on there. It kind of almost looked like shoe polish. I took the lemon oil and I started to rub it down and my beautiful pristine yellow Gibson rag became stained with permanent black gunk on there. So I'm convinced at this point that there's some kind of wood dye that was put on the fretboard and it wasn't properly removed. I don't know if they all come like that or if it's just my guitar but it does wash off but uh yeah there was this weird residue but then when you take it off the wood does look very good but it doesn't look as black as it did earlier uh now my fretboard looks a little brownish like dark brown almost like rosewood another little caveat was the springs in the guitar whenever you use the tremolo bar it does make this loud clunk sound Now, the more I use the guitar, the more that effect will go away. And even for a few dollars, I could buy some good quality springs and just install those. It's not that big of a deal, but mine does that. It doesn't mean they will all do it, but mine had a loud clunky sound. Just worth noting in case they all kind of have these cheap springs that do that then you'll know to maybe just change them right away. Don't bother with the one that come with the guitar. We're gonna get to some audio examples shortly. I just wanna tell you about the mods and why I decided to do them. So the first thing that I noticed with this guitar is that the pickup sounded really dark. I'm not sure why that is. It had 250K alpha pots in there. They're better than what I expected. They weren't those small dime sized one. They were the big alpha pots. And I was like, well, it should sound good. But with the 250K, it sounded muddy. It was fine on the bridge. But as soon as I got to the middle and neck, I didn't find it to be a usable tone. What I got Phil to do is change the 250K pots to 500K pots. And that made a whole world of difference. We're gonna go listen to some clean example. And in these examples, we're gonna be switching between the bridge, bridge and middle, so on and so forth. And we're gonna be comparing with a very simple lick, the before and after the change in value in those pots. <laughs> Now to recap the mods I have so far, I've changed the tuning keys to Grover's, I have a new nut, and the tone and volume pot are 500k. I also have a push-pull on the tone. I'm going to get back to that after I'm done explaining how this all works. So originally, this guitar comes wired in parallel, which is pretty standard, but for Brian May, his guitar is wired in series. So I had Phil wire this guitar in series. So we're still using the exact same pickup this guitar came with. They're not trisonics, they're just whatever they used. I have 500K pots, it's wired in series. So now the output really is way more than what it was before. What Phil did is that if you put all three knobs at the very top, so towards you and not towards the ground, there's no signal going through the circuit, just like the original Brian May guitar. And then as you bring down each switch, you're activating the three pickups. And what's really cool is that you can have the bridge and middle, you can have the bridge, middle, and neck 
together at the same time, just like the Brian May Special. Now the three-way toggle switch no longer selects the different pickups. It is actually the phase reverse for the neck and middle. And this push-pull switch, that one is the phase reverse for the bridge and middle. You, we can combine this in so many ways. I think there are 12 tones uh, in total in this guitar. So we can have bridge and middle, bridge and middle phase reverse. We can have the middle and neck, middle and neck phase reverse. We can have the neck and the bridge and phase reverse as well. We can have all three with either the phase reversed on the neck or the phase reversed on the bridge. So there's a lot of tones now in this guitar. The wiring has been changed, the pots have been changed, but it's still the same pickups. And to me, it doesn't even sound like the same guitar anymore. So if you're interested in hearing that, we're gonna be comparing all these different modes now compared to what I had stock with the parallel wiring. <laughs> This far in the video it means you want to know whether this was all worth it so let's look at the cost we're talking about $2.99 for the guitar direct from Toman. I had to budget a bit more money not just for the maintenance of the guitar but also the mods now depending who you deal with if you're dealing with a big name store they might charge you quite a lot of money but if you know someone who does this at home they might charge you far less than the big name brand store so for me, I knew someone who could do it. He charged me 90 euros on top of what I paid for the guitar. We're looking at $389. I'm still at least at half the cost of buying a Brian May Special. I don't have the same pickups. It's not the same guitar, but it gets me close to that territory. And for me, that is good enough. Was it worth it? With the mods, so the 500K pots, a new nut, already had the Grover tuners lying around. So all in all, I believe this was actually a very good choice and it makes for a good guitar. I'm not gonna tell you that it is a fantastic guitar and my mind is blown. I've played some budget guitars that were as good as this and this one's properly set up is very playable and it's quite a joy to play. If you only have this guitar, then you might be happy with it, but I got quite a few guitars and I don't see myself gravitating for this for everyday use but when i'm doing something like queen or i'm covering you know out of phase tones or whatever now i'm going to have that option with this guitar so no it's not my new favorite it's not a guitar that i fell in love with but it is a guitar that i do enjoy playing because it has some tones in there that i don't have with any of my other guitars i do believe it was worth it if you do the mods that i did unless you really like the darker tone you might want to consider doing those little tweaks to it. Is the whole wiring like parallel versus series worth it? If you're going for Brian May, I would say yes. If you're not going for Brian May, you might enjoy the parallel tones 
that you get from it. It, it, it does sound good stock. It's just that I wanted to get as close as possible. And when you can kick in all three pickups together, I mean, it's a hell of a sound. It just kicks the front end of your amp like the other wiring doesn't do. So if you're looking for that, like getting all three pickups there and having all these different variations, I highly recommend that you do this mod to this guitar. It is well worth it. Now, if you enjoyed this, I'm starting a brand new series all about Brian May, his guitar tone, and why you can't sound like him. You can get close, but there's a few reasons why if you just got a treble booster, a Vox amplifier, and let's say the real deal Brian May Red Special, you're still not gonna be anywhere near his tone. There's some very key ingredients there that I actually used in the intro song of this particular video. So if you wanna know what those are, I invite you to click on screen and come check out this new series all about Brian May. See you in the next one. Cheers.